Alright, well good afternoon everyone. Welcome back to Plug uh. History here at Middleton Place. Uh, today is Wednesday, which means it is On the Farm Wednesday Day. Uh, as you can see, my name is Jeff Neal, I'm Director of Interpretation. I've got Bob Sherman with me. He, good afternoon. He handles our historic agriculture and livestock. And you may notice that I have my shepherd's crook with me, which means we're going to be talking about sheep today. Bob, tell us, what kind of sheep do we have here at Middleton Place? Well, what we have here are uh, Gulf Coast native sheep, which is actually a very old breed. Uh, brought in probably by the Spanish back in the 16th century. Uh, they go way back. They actually became a feral breed living in the southeast, uh, the panhandle of Florida, uh, around the Gulf. And over the years, they've actually developed uh, quite a bit of uh, what they call parasite resistance. Uh, they've also developed uh, the ability to resist foot rot, which is a problem here in the southeast for a lot of ovines, for sheep. And uh, they, they're really the kind of sheep you might have seen here a few hundred years ago. Uh, you know, it's important to understand that breeds are something we decide as human beings. We decide to make an animal or breed an animal for its hair or its meat. And over the years, a lot of these, these sheep in particular, uh, sort of naturally selected, and they've really adapted really well to the southeast. So it's the climate and the culture out here actually has a whole lot to do with the type of animal that we're bringing in. Very much so, very much yeah. so. I mean, we, we try, to, try to give folks an idea because, of course, we're more about education than we are production. Uh, so we want them to see the kinds of livestock that might have been here. We also, and this also helps to preserve genetic diversity. Uh, that's something with these heritage breeds, they call them. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, they're not the best wool sheep or the best meat sheep, but it preserves this diversity in the gene pool. Uh, of course, one of the great examples is the Irish potato famine, where they use the same potato all around Ireland. It gets the blight, and a lot of people go, obviously, desperately hungry. Uh, these guys, like I say, they're not the best production animal, if you will, uh, but the fact that they're so well adapted here to the southeast uh, it makes them a pretty interesting animal and useful for uh, agriculturalists as well. All right, now I know one of the big questions we get, how do we tell the boy and a girl? And what do we call a boy or a so, girl? Okay, Sheep 101, Sheep 101. Uh, we've got a couple things, of course. Well, first I'll tell you my biggest pet peeve is uh, they're either a lamb mm -hmm. or a baby sheep. I'm okay with either. Okay. Saying a baby lamb is like saying lamb lamb, okay? So just work on that one. You don't want to sound foolish, okay? But, um, of course, when they're born, uh, they're either a ram, lamb, a male, or a ewe, lamb, E-W-E. -E. Uh, those are females. Uh, if the ram is neutered, they become a weather, W-E-T-H-E-R. And we do have several weathers here. Uh, we don't, at the moment, have any intact rams that are adults. Uh, it takes about four years, really, to call them an adult sheep. Um, but they'll breed much earlier. And that's one of the things about these Gulf Coasts. They've so well adapted to the southeast here. Uh, usually, sheep don't breed until they get the cooler weather of the fall. That doesn't happen in the southeast, most of it. So, they've actually developed the ability to breed anytime. Uh, their gestation period is only about five months, give or take. So, we don't want to have lambs in the middle of July or the middle of January. Uh, so, we keep a, a ram separate, uh, literally off property. So, we have ewes, rams, and weathers. Yeah. How can I tell just looking at them? Ah, well, we tell gender by the back end, not the front end. Uh, that's one of the things, of course, both of these ladies here rubbing on you. We've got, uh, we've got ewes, um, and you tell, obviously, by the rear end. I won't go too deep into that. We'll leave that for folks to discuss with So the kids. horns have nothing to do nothing with Nothing to do whatsoever. Fans. Right, right. Ooh. Gender's not an in indication by... Although you can tell a ram very often, their horns are much larger and much more prominent. Uh, but ewes can have horns as well, especially in these older heritage breeds. Uh, you'll see later we'll talk about cattle where they've developed these tall breeds, hornless breeds, and that's pretty common. I noticed they're having a good rub on your, yeah. uh, your crook. <laughs> now, what they do. we call these heritage breeds. Okay, now when we use the term heritage breeds, it actually means two things. One, a heritage breed refers to the type of animals that our forefathers raised and kept. But also, heritage breeds here at Middleton Place also reply, or also refers to the type of animals that were actually raised on this plantation. For example, according to the agricultural census of 1850 for Middleton Place, there's 300 sheep on this plantation. Now, for these sheep, matter of fact, for all the animals you see out here, they serve a variety of functions. First and foremost, all of these animals, well, they would have been raised for food, okay? Uh, we know that Williams Middleton in the 1850, he is selling lambs for $7 a head, all right? 
And this aspect of them being used as food is not only for the plantation, it's also to be sold off the plantation. Secondly, all the animals here, well, they make something for us, okay? In the case of the sheep, we're looking at the wool. We're looking at the fleece here, all right? Uh, we shear in the spring. Matter of fact, uh, in a, a future podcast here, we'll do a little shearing for you, show you how it works. But we know in 1850, those 300 sheep, they produced over 600 pounds of wool, right? Next, all these animals, well, not only do they make something for us, they do something for us. And in the case of the sheep, well, this is the four-legged lawnmower, all right? They help keep the grass down here to a certain degree. And then lastly, all these animals here, well, they're also here for, shall we say, an aesthetic purpose as well. Uh, with the sheep, it very much, grazing out here on the greensward, gives you that, shall we say, English countryside, a very pastoral setting out here, all right? So it, it actually helps to even beautify this place even more so. Well, and I think too, they've, they've become quite a signature site, if you will, here at Middleton Place. I like pointing out to people how there is the uh, the, the great book, uh, Good Night Charleston, you mm -hmm. know, modeled yeah. on the Good Night Moon. <laughs> and one of the pages is Good Night Sheep at Middleton Place, and they're out in front of our house. So they've really become an icon here as well. Now, just recently, within the past, oh, what do you say, five days? Yep, less than I a think, week. Uh, we have had some lambs born. So we thought we'll leave the adults here, let them continue their lunch, and let's walk Perfect. over and we'll see some of the newborns. Well, here, we're here with two of our newborns. Uh, since last Friday, we've had six lambs born, right? We've had two sets of twins and two singles. Which, but, isn't, which isn't uncommon. I mean, they, it, uh, one, the Gulf Coast are great. They're a very easy uh, lammer. They're, they're really well, well uh, equipped to deal with a lot of these lambs. And, uh, the moms are great mothers. Uh, I kept a flock before, about 40 of them. Uh, we would find the lambs born out in pasture all the time, well cared for. Uh, they, they're almost walking almost instantly. Uh, they get up on their legs. Uh, they do try to nurse fairly quickly, uh, and they're pretty good at that. Uh, and as you can tell, these two are good and strong. Uh, they do grow very fast. They sometimes will have these brown and spots and different things. But as they grow their coat in, it'll go, it'll go pretty much white. They do have a bit of a, a, a tan variation, and there are some occasionally that are black. I mean, they do have, uh, being as how they weren't really declared a breed until the late 20th century, there's a lot of Heinz 57 in them. We do, <laughs> we do dock their tails. It's called docking, where we put a, uh, a strong rubber band uh, in between the vertebrae of their tail to, to actually shorten their tail a little bit. And that's really about hygiene. That's one of the problems here in the southeast. There's parasites, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of flies all the time. And so it keeps their tail a lot cleaner and is a lot healthier for them. Uh, but these guys are very active. Uh, they're real strong uh, and they grow so, so fast. Probably one of the big questions we get is, what do you do during the birthing? Do you have to get in there and help the mother or anything? And honestly, no. The more the mother can do by herself, the better it is. And it's kind of a natural, they have a natural instinct with this. And as Bob said, once the lamb is born, um, probably within minutes, it is up and walking. And a few minutes out of that, it is starting to nurse. I, I've been here this. 15 years. I've only had to once assist in a birth. Uh, yeah. We'll oftentimes rub them down just to get some of the dampness off them. Uh, but we like to leave them with the mothers as much as we yeah. can so they can really form that bond right. uh, and do real well together. And she will do the majority of the cleaning of the lamb. Mm -hmm. Okay, she does this one, not only just to clean him and, and also bond, as Bob said, but the other thing is, is when she's doing that, she's actually getting blood circulation in the lamb to get him to warm up with this. And as Bob said, they will grow rather quickly. They're going to nurse for roughly... Would you say about about eight to twelve weeks? Yeah, I think that in that ballpark of ten is is pretty common, yeah. you yeah. know. And they'll they'll even now. I mean, it's only been a few days, and some of them will try to, to mouth on hay or yeah. grain, that kind of thing, mimicking what they see their mothers do. But they'll grow pretty fast. I mean, before you know it, they're going to be grown and off to college, and <laughs> yeah. they'll, they'll never write back or anything like that to us. So, <laughs> won't you? Well. This is probably one of the most special things we have here at Middleton Place, especially at this time of the year. And a lot of people ask, well, how do you, do you time this? And actually we do. Uh, about the gestation, as Bob mentioned, was five months, roughly. So about, oh, what is it, about November? Yep. yep. I believe it is. We will bring the ram in. Okay, these guys, technically, this breed of sheep, uh, they could have two births a year. 
All right, but we try to hold it down to one. Yep. So uh, what we have found out is abstinence is the best form of birth control out here. So we just keep the ram away. We bring him in for a few, oh, a couple weeks or so. Let him do what he's brought here for and then take him away. And then we just wait. And we do, and we do time it to have them a little bit before our sheep shearing, which we'll see more of later and, and do some more videos of. Uh, and of course, when we're doing our shearing, a lot of folks love to see the lambs out here at the same time. So it's, it is time on purpose. Uh, and that's, that's commonly done on most uh, properties. Well, we want to thank you all for coming out and, and watching us today. And we'd also like to point out, if you want to learn more about the lambs or about Middleton Place, we ask that you please go to uh, middletonplace.org. There. Not only can you learn more about Middleton Place, but you could also find ways to donate to help us not only run these programs that we're doing now, uh, but also to help take care of these animals. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated. We do appreciate it very much. Okay. And we hope to see you again tomorrow. So thanks again for coming. You guys want to run to your mother? Have a great day. Hey, you buddy. Let's see if you run. You ready? All right, run, be free. <laughs> there she is. There you go. <laughs> Home sweet home.